Pickaxe. Hello and welcome to Yompa! Yes, this is Yomp, Ye Old Movie Podcast. It's an acronym. Yomp, it also means some sort of hike or something, and we're taking a hike through the world of cinema. <coughs> yes. Um, who is we? We is me, Simon Lane, the Honeydew Man, Diggy Hole Fella, uh, Dwarf Clown uh, Lane. And I am joined by the... Um, Richly fragrant <laughs> G-Star games. Mm. Very potent. Hello, everyone. You're like Daenerys in Game of Thrones. You're, um... You're A lot known... of people say that. Yeah, your yeah. known list of things that you are, just the list keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. Welcome <laughs> to this episode of Yom. <laughs> When we talk about movies, and Simon calls me fragrant at the beginning of it. And uh, joined by me is my vamptacular, <laughs> wonderful <laughs> co host, Sophie. Blair, I am the Sophie. I don't, Blair. Know, why I, I don't know why I became Italian there for a minute. I was <laughs> Romanian, but. It's the fangs. It's the fangs. They're, um, they're doing something to you. I got my fangs installed today, this morning, before recording. And look, I can talk normally. You can't tell that... I can't hear the fangs. You can't no. hear the fangs. You can't... I mean, I, I don't sound like this. Oh, God. Darker. You see, because they did very well. I just want to look more and more like the picture that we have of me on Yomp. The, the mm. picture that Max did. Oh, my goodness. Hello, I'm Sophie, also known as Booth, if you find me on places that call me that. Um, and guess what? It's this week we watched a film that I picked. Finally. Finally. Finally, finally. Mm, exciting. And I, I, I was really excited because... You, you was. She was. Well, I was. I'm sorry. I was really excited. Um, I was really I'm right excited to watch this because I've been dying to watch it again for ages. Uh, and uh, we, we finally got the opportunity and I get to share it with you and with bunches of other people. What a laugh, eh? What a laugh. I'm trying to think when the last booth pick... Oh, it's Blowout. Blowout was the last yeah, booth. Yeah, so not too long ago, right? Not too long ago. One, two, three, four, five, six weeks. Oh my god, it was quite okay, long. Okay, that is quite long. I, oh my god, Blood did not feel that long ago, but I think it's because it's re recently released-ish, so I'm thinking it was more recent than it is. Right, right, I see. The episode has been out and we've watched it and re relatively recently, so it doesn't feel like it was long ago. That's right. I get what you're saying, I get what yes. you're saying. yes. Um, so, Sophie, why did you put The Hidden on your list of films? Well, um, you know, when we started, we were like trying to pick out different genres of film mm. and everything. And I was trying to think outside of my usual scope of straight up horror or straight up comedy. I didn't want a comedy film because I do love my comedies and a lot of them will fit into that category. Um and the hidden is is one that I think has been largely forgotten about. It was you added this onto your list week five, mm -hmm. um, and we're on week I don't know forty two or something, including like a couple of specials. But then we also did the Christmas ones; they don't count. So it's been a long time. Yes, and I just I think this film is so it's not spoken about anymore, and I don't know why. I mean, maybe I do know why, but I love it. I love The Hidden, and I just think I, I wanted to share it, it with you guys. That it's not just a straight-up thriller or a straight-up sci-fi or a straight-up anything. It's not straight-up. It's all wiggly-windy, but not really wiggly-windy. It's quite an easy-going film, I think, as well. It's a fun, easy watch, I would say. It's not too taxing. You don't really... 
You don't got to use brain. Things no. are spelled out for you. Pr- well, pretty well. There are a couple of moments where I was like, who's that guy? Mm-hmm. But they do kind of say, and I'm yeah, like, oh. I, f- I felt that way a couple of times, but like it wasn't rampant. Um, I think it was like near yeah. the end um, where I was like, wait, who's, who, where, what, wasn't it the, d- uh, okay. And then <laughs> I caught up. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would say this is, it's such a cult movie that if you were to Google sci-fi cult movies, it would not appear. Well, you know what's really weird? I'm, I'm still a Tumblr user occasionally. And I literally was just scrolling my dashboard. It was not even like a a, a, a spec like a specific search, and that that gift set appeared, like a mm. gift set from the hidden. And I was like, "That is fucking weird timing." Like that is. So I, mean, fucking- I think it's your your cookies. Your browser history has been shared. No, it's, it's someone I follow. I definitely follow this person. And then like a gift set appeared from the hidden up with the with the sex worker. And I was like, whoa, whoa, I, I recognize that. Of course, there's a sex worker in this. Of course, there's sex workers in this film. Of course. Of I course. didn't even fucking clock that until I rewatched it. And I laughed. Yeah. A stripper does die in this film, which is why it's on Sophie's list, I yeah. assume. And I knew I, when I was watching, I was like, "Oh my god, they're going to take the piss out of me!" As soon as, this, as soon they? as I saw it, I was like, "Simon will definitely say something uh, yeah. about about there being sex workers <laughs> dying." When I saw it was the 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 harem club, I you know on the little card the guys going through the oh, wallet, I was like, "Harem." I was like, that's a fucking brothel and a prostitute is going to get murdered by him. <laughs> We're calling it now. And it, well, it's not quite. It's not quite. It's a strip club and a stripper. So. Yeah. Yeah. Close enough for Sophie. So I don't really know how we want to do this because, I mean, I'll give you a, 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 a brief synopsis. How about that? Sure. Pitch me. We're in an elevator. You're, you're, I'm a big producer. I'm Lin Shay's husband, and I'm going to produce this movie and put my fucking wife in it in a small role. Uh, do you want a blowjob? Wow. I'd love one. Okay. Would you make uh, my movie if I did that? Sure. Excellent. There we go. There we go. And that's how Hollywood that's works. That's how Hollywood New Line is. Cinema. <laughs> 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 oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. I, I, I have temporary whiplash, but then I, again, I, th- I think my brain hasn't, like, quite You'll be woken fine. up today. You'll yeah. Be fine. I'll be fine. I mean, given what was just said, I'm not surprised. Yeah. But that's fine. Would, would G like a blower job? I would, you know. It's been a while. <laughs> no. So there you go. This is how <laughs> podcasting works. Yay. It's been a while. So we... Uh, blowjobs for everyone! Blowjobs all around. <laughs> you yeah, can blow a job. Patreon for blowjobs. Uh, <laughs> woo! I like the opening credits. There's this guy. Oh, wait, I was going to give a synopsis. Yeah, um, you're going to give a brief synopsis, like a pitch. Okay, so there's a guy... That that he's he's gone fucking mad and he's he's robbing banks and shooting everything up and then he um is like oh we got him but then the FBI man comes play, played by Kyle MacLachlan and um he is assigned to work with the investigator on this case and he's like ah oh, but it's not done because we need to find this man now because there's an alien type weird little slug spider monster that jumps down people's throats, uh, takes over them, and he's he takes these identities and he wants to become president. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well summarised, Sophie. Thanks. Um, I would say throughout this entire film, whenever Kyle McLaughlin was stood there in his light grey suit, I was just picturing David Bowie. Why? Huh. Because he wears a similar suit in Twin Peaks, mm. and I was just picturing that character. I mean, I will say, I just, especially in the beginning, all I could think of was Twin Peaks. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. man, I really want to watch Twin Peaks. <laughs> so, um, Instead just, of this. <laughs> we just passed Twin Peaks Day as well. Did and we? It's, it's do a rewatch for, from me. Fucking love Twin Peaks. Oh, it's so good. Good. It's so it's good. So good. So good. Yes. Yeah, so, like this film, 
But I, I did like that you, you, you just see Kyle McLaughlin, you see that he's FBI, and I'm thinking, man, he looks like a little boy in his little suit and stuff. And then the, the cops in this precinct say, man, they're hiring them they're younger and younger these days. Straight out of high out of, school. <laughs> straight out of high school. I'm like, yes, he does look like a baby, doesn't he? He was very... Very, very baby faced in the film. Yeah. Baby faced. Baby. He stayed baby faced for quite a long time. He did. I he yeah. Did. I mean, this was a f- like, this was only a few years after he was Paul Atreides in Dune. Oh, well, he looked so fucking young in that. He yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mega young. I love that film, though. I love Dune. Are we going to put Showgirls on the list now to replace. Uh... Yes. I just want to yeah. see him throw, throw another hooker around. Oh my god! Oh my god, that movie is so weird. What Showgirls? Yeah, yeah, I watched it. I think last year, and I was like, "Wow, this is weird. This is a weird film. <laughs> it's just very aggressive in in all aspects." There are a lot of those films that were made, uh, you know, the the sort of erotic thrillery kind of thing. Um, I wouldn't call Showgirls a thriller, really. But... Uh, no, but it does kind of keep you on the edge of your seat a little bit. It's very erratic, and they're, the behaviour of a lot of people in the movie is very erratic. And I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen in this film. The thrashing around in the swimming pool was very erratic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And there was like another scene where like the sex in, in it is just so fucking aggressive and weird, and it doesn't look like sex at all. <laughs> I really recommend the Red Letter Media sort of spotlight. No one cries afterwards, for starters. Sorry, what was... Uh, <clears throat> I think that just might be a you experience, Simon. I don't think what? people cry after sex, typically. Okay. I think that's a you experience. Why? <laughs> uh, yeah, Red Letter Media did I a, a nice that. little... Yeah. Just recommending them in general, I think. Yeah, but I mean, they did a really nice little spotlight on Showgirls. Much better than Yomp. Um, <laughs> wow. But I don't know, one day, one day we'll catch up with them, I'm sure one of day, it. I'm gonna, yeah. we've got to, I mean, as soon as they pop off, it's not long now, they're elderly. Oh yeah, we're just in line to just take over. Yeah. Succession style. Inherit their crown. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, are we going to go through this like scene by scene? I guess we should. I'll leave it up to Sophie. Well, I think we can sort of vaguely go through it, scene by like in in order, but we don't have to go into too much depth, really, okay. because there's not a lot of depth in it. Well, well, yeah, a lot of things happen, you know. <laughs> there are things that happen, but it's like I don't feel like it's too taxing on the brain. Okay. I, there. There are a few things that I mean. There's a lot that made me laugh, and I, I made quite a few notes, to be honest, just Good. because I was excited. I was excited. Okay, I'll I'll like go through my notes and summarize, and interrupt, and um, just say, "Oh, this is boring," and then cut cut to the next scene if you want. If I'm like, okay, going on too much. Oh, boy. All right? <sighs> You're yeah. already bored of me talking, and I haven't even started. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Okay, um, so there's the opening titles, and there's like black and white CCTV footage of a bank. It feels like it's a found footage movie we're watching. I like this opening. You know, I don't like me uh, me crawling credits or whatever. The, I was going to say, yeah, it's kind of like another way of doing that. Can you imagine if there was a text call at the start that said, an alien invader has taken the host of a body? I <laughs> like would have scrolling up. hated that. I would <laughs> absolutely hated that. Because it just ruins it. It ruins any level of suspense and mystery. <sighs> and I think they, they did it really well at the beginning. You know, the way it all transpires yeah. with, the, with the CCTV footage. We, we do kind of figure out what's going on very very early too early i think but yeah i don't mind that because it's like i mean i i, I know why they did it but i would have liked a little bit more mystery in it yeah me too um so there's a guy in this bank and he stood there wearing a long coat he's just standing there just staring and then he pulls out a shotgun and just starts blasting people away he walks outside, he gets into a black roofless Ferrari, puts on some heavy metal and starts driving away. He's wearing these like really thin 
framed glasses, these these metal gl- framed glasses that don't really match his face. It feels like he's wearing prop glasses. He looks um, like uh, Brian Cranston, Harrison Ford's love child. No, he Ru- looks like um, <laughs> Russell Crowe. This this guy was in um, in Twin Peaks, right? He was, yeah. I do not recognize him. It's uh, Chris Mulkey. He plays DeVries. So yeah, the cops are pursuing him, and they always seem to be either directly behind him or like right in front of him. It's like it's like ru- it's like the rubber banding kind of thing that you have in um, racing games, like Mario mm. Kart. Suddenly, like all the NPCs are right behind you, and you're like, "But, but how?" But um, anyway, they there's a roadblock. They take him out. They they blast the shit out of him. They they shoot the car. He's so chill. Yeah, and he's. Barely reacting to He's being barely shot. Rea- he barely reacts when he runs over a man in a wheelchair. That was fucking hilarious. I laughed my ass off. I loved it. Oh my god! She just goes flying over the car. Well, there was like a lot of tropes. There was like the glass pane. The, cr- the glass <laughs> pane. Did we not mention <laughs> that the- recently? Right? Yeah, we did. I'm pretty sure we did. Why are they carrying a pane of glass? Why didn't they park on the the other side of the road? Because it's a Why try. <laughs> Yeah. So fucking dumb. <laughs> oh. It's brilliant. Like I just, I, they they know it's really tongue in cheek. A lot of this, they know what they're fucking doing. It's so over the top. Like it's ridiculous. And he's being blasted away. He crashes the car at the roadblock. He comes out of the car and he's standing upright. And the cops just blow him away, and the car fucking explodes. Yeah, and it like. There, there was a cut right before this where the neighbors, the neighbor of his neighbor, is being interviewed by cops, mm-hmm. and they're saying, "Yeah, he's a real quiet guy. You know, he's a proper gentleman." Yeah, and yeah. it's like, "What the fuck?" He's a nice man. He'd never. Do, what do you do? Rob a bank? And they're like, "La Mayo." Well, it kind of reminds me of that. What's that incel movie with Michael Douglas? Joker. Falling down. Yeah, falling down. It kind of reminds me of that, you know, there's like a nice, quiet, subdued guy and then he just fucking Mm. like snaps and starts going on a fucking killing spree. Um, But I was like, is it that or is it something more like sci-fi, basically, you know, which, yeah. He's in hospital and he's all crispy and the 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 detectives are like, he'll be dead soon, so don't worry about it. Yeah, the the doc says, I doubt he'll last a night and the cop says, good. And the doctor's like, what are you talking about? What? And then the cop says, he's killed 12 people, wounded 23 more, stole six cars, most of them Ferraris, robbed eight banks, six supermarkets, four jewelry stars and a candy shop. Four jewelry stores and a candy shop. Mm. Six people he carved up with a butcher's knife, including two kids, and he did all of this in this two massive weeks. spree in two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I, I thought he was listening from the day, and I'm like, oh, okay. So he's been <laughs> he's been running rampant. He's been busy. Yeah, he's been a busy boy. Fuck it, oh my goodness. I was like, yeah, he kind of. I think he deserves it. Uh, I think he. Uh, I think he's he's done a lot of damage. Yeah, Uh, and you're thinking, like, great, I want this man to die. But, right, FBI man. mm. FBI man, Lloyd Gallagher. Uh, He turns up. He's very strange, is uh, Lloyd Gallagher. He makes a lot of... He's he's got a lot of snappy comebacks that that make you laugh. Yeah. I boiled it down to, you know, because when you think of an FBI agent, they're a lot more... They're you know, cold and calculated. Yeah, they're like, you know. you know, closer to God, but like closer to the government in the sense that like the more closer to the government you are, you're more like stoic and rigid and fucking uptight. Yeah. And so uh, like, that's what I assumed his persona was, you know, he's the cold, silent, calculated yeah. type. Um, but again, the guy's like, the, the boss man's like, all right, you're assigned to Beck on this case now because he's from the FBI. And Beck's like, does anyone ever say please anymore? And Lloyd says, please. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like, oh. and But everybody's he's, he's pissed off that he has to fucking deal with this guy. And he's like, well, congratulations. We found your man. He's in the hospital dying. You're welcome. Next next case, you can just fuck off. Anyway, yeah, yeah. He just he runs... Mm. He runs over to the hospital. Off he goes. Meanwhile. Meanwhile. 
Meanwhile. Meanwhile. Meanwhile. The- the horribly burned and supposedly dying De Vries opens his eyes suddenly, sits up very quickly, removes all of the medical shit that's attached to him and like down his throat. Um, and then he like, that he has a roommate in this hospital room, just goes over to him, starts pulling out wires and shit, uh, mounts the guy. And then we see these horrible spider legs crawl out of his mouth. A fucking slug face appears and... This this giant spacey spider legged slug comes out of his mouth and enters the other guy's mouth. I was beyond repulsed. <laughs> like, it's like, disgusting. It's fucking this dis- goopy. Yeah, and- it looks like a slug, and I'm not. You know, I don't really like insects. I I don't go out of my way to fucking kill them or anything. Like they can exist. That's slug fine. Slug is a mollusk. G stone. Whatever. Games. Whatever. Slug is mollusk. Shrimp is bugs. <laughs> I I just don't like insects, bugs, mollusks, cr- cr- whatever. All I don't like them. Okay, they creep me out. So seeing one that big, I'm like mm. with spider arms and loads of tentacles on the end, and it's coming out of a man's mouth and into yeah. another man's mouth. It was visceral. As it goes, as it goes in the other man's mouth, you see all this white. Stuff coming. All right, that that gave me a very visceral, very visceral reaction. Almost more than extra. Because extra had some like some pretty bits, right? You know, (laughs) but like, well, that that it made me feel very uncomfortable. But that's the point. It's supposed to be gross and weird and creepy and like, what the fuck is going on? And it did it did a good job. What did you think of the special effect, like the practical effects of this? What did you think of the dummy heads and the alien thing? And there's there's a bit where there's the aliens' little sticks are trying to come out of the man's arm. And I thought it was good. I actually thought yeah. it was pretty decent. Like it did. Yeah, his face didn't even look like a mannequin or or a fake head or whatever. It was a little bit toe recally in places. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You, you can tell it's like a, a stunt face, but as far as stunt heads go, that's pretty good, I'd say. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I thought they did a really good job with a lot of the prosthetics in the movie. Yeah. It's um, good enough to suspend your disbelief, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes, At very much so. Respect. It was more convincing than the fake dead man in Indiana Jones. Oh yeah, that died. Yes. Melina, the the Melina's death at the beginning of uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, at least. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the the doctor comes in because he's like, oh, let's check on our patients. I don't know why they've put two men in this room together. This the the crispy Very man convenient. should. <laughs> yeah, the, he should have been in in intensive care. It doesn't seem like he's in intensive care because he's not being watched at all. Now this other guy, he's just got he's just got an oxygen mask on. He's pretty chill there. But um, they do they do uh what are they called? D D fib on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, doesn't really work until bam throws him off. Man's heart rate is going two hundred fifty five beats per minute. Oh my god. And uh, then he's off. Were you watching this on Blu-ray on a big TV? I w- yeah, I was watching this on Plex. Right. So yeah, I, there's no way I would have been able to read um, the beats per minute on how I was watching it. I was watching it on my phone. Um, Simon, like, holding oh it in portrait mode and with the film like God, <laughs> why? Escape mode. Well, I was I was honouring uh, Honey Tom. By doing oh this. Oh um, my god. <laughs> <laughs> the roast. I was not. I was not. Uh, I was watching it on Prime. Okay. Um, well, I did have to have to rent it, but yeah. Did you did you feel like it was worth three pound fifty or whatever it was? Oh yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure. It's an enjoyable fun romp. Okay. I like it when Simon calls things a romp. romp. Because that's one of his go to words. It, it sounds like yomp. Romp. <laughs> he does he loves he loves the word romp. He, he loves it. It's good. I'm sorry. I'm an old man. I use old words. I thought it was splendid. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was tip top. Rollicking. Old sport. Oh, my God. It was bally good. Uh, we learn that this man, Jonathan Miller, has had a trip. He needs a triple bypass. This man. 
and he just got up and fucking left. And they're like, what the shit? All right. <laughs> DeVries is dead. He's dead. He's no more. He's done for. But this other guy that was in the room with him, he, he what was it that he had? He had really bad uh, acid reflux. <laughs> he's got acid reflux. He's got IBS. He's got diverticulitis. Basically oh everything I have, this man has. And then his heart gave out. Oh, also, sorry, going back to the scene where the slug crawls out, I just, I looked at my notes and I, I was like, oh God, the tube that's shoved down his throat and he just yanks it out. Also, he yeah. He just extubates himself like it's nothing. Yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, listen to how it like escalates. I'm like, he just yanks it out. Also, yeah, this guy should not be, and then I typed A. L I dash, and then the fucking slug was crawling out of it. I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck is oh. going on? I hate this! A slug's coming out of his mouth!" And I started just losing my mind. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I thought because you know when he pulled the tube out, I'm like, "Oh, that's so gross." Little did I know it was only going to get worse. <laughs> oh, much worse. <laughs> so our, our Mister Miller, he's he's left the hospital. He's gone. And now he's gone to a, a music shop and he's wearing a, you know, a nice suit and he's just picking up cassette tapes and putting them in the pocket of his jacket. Um, the store owner can see this and he's like, hey, buddy, hey, old man, what are you doing? I'm talking to you, wank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking wank. to you, wank. <laughs> um, yeah, Miller just beats the fucking shit out of this man, uh, then goes over the t to the till, empties it, and just uh, takes a gun from there. Um, then he, like, smashes a cabinet and takes a ghetto blaster. And, yep. um... Is it actually called a ghetto blaster and not a boombox? Whatever. I think they're interchangeable. Gotcha. Um, what is you're giggling the it. You're difference? I'm actually curious. I'm actually curious if it if there is a difference. A boombox is what white people call it. A ghetto blast is what black people call it. It's probably it. Yeah. 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 The wide use of boomboxes in urban communities led to the boombox being coined as a ghetto blaster. There we go. Uh, Interesting. Which was used as part of a black backlash against the boombox and hip-hop culture. Mm. Oh! Mm. Um, it was, the boombox quickly became associated with urban society, particularly black and Hispanic youth. So you could say that naming it a ghetto blaster is, is, is a racially charged term for it. I feel yeah. like it is, yeah, because I was because I've always associated with boombox, right? I've never boombox, you know, said boombox, boombox, coined it as ghetto blaster. But yeah, there you go. I always called it a boombox, boomer box. Yeah, I mean now it's definitely a, a boomer box. Now it is, yeah. Do you know I don't have one, and I really do want one. That's really surprising. Want I really want a boombox. Mine broke. Oh. I have a little radio in the shape of a boombox, but a boombox is like taller, oh my God. right? It's like a it's, little bit uh, taller and it's... Yeah. I wish got... it was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. <laughs> oh! I love, I love boomboxes. I, I like the ones with two tape. Um, yeah, they're two pretty tape cool. cassette decks because you can like copy your tapes. Anyway... Uh, Gallagher tells Beck that now he's after Miller. Miller is now his guy. And Beck is not impressed with this. He looks up the guy's record and then he has traffic tickets. And then he gets a call to the record store. Um, and he gets there and Gallagher's already there. <laughs> so, but Gallagher's got like a really good fast car. So that probably explains how he got there. We do learn that he's got a fast car. Yeah. Um, no, wait. No, no, wait, wait. No, no, wait, wait. No, 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 wait, wait. Yeah. Wait, no, no, wait, wait, yeah. Wait, what's happening? Okay. Is this the bit um, where... What the is it, no, no, what's no, wait, happening? wait. Doesn't he take the car, doesn't he get, put it, like, say, let's go in this one, and then they go in the Porsche and the conversation? I think it's later on that is we that see later? that. Yeah. It's, okay. it's, I think it's the next scene, maybe. Okay. Or a couple of scenes later. I, I Right. Have you noticed that when Beck is he means business, he points with two fingers. <laughs> I find that so fucking funny. Oh my god. At least he doesn't use his knuckle. Oh, but he's pointing to his head. His, to his head is what you're talking about. 
when he's no, like no like he points and he points with his little finger as well as his index finger amazing he middle, I, I just I think that's so fucking funny when people do that I'm gonna start doing it you should then I'll know yeah, you mean I think business it's a, it's a very yeah it's a biz, it's a business thing I think it's it matches the new vampire queen Sophie it does to have it? a strange pointing mm. um I should have got the Nosferatu fangs, like the two uh, incisors. Oh, no, <laughs> elongated. Don't. Jesus yeah. Christ. That would affect how you speak. It would. I'd be fucking stupid. So, yeah, at the record store, Gallagher is talking to a witness and um, Beck's not happy that Gallagher's there. Um, I do like the witness's outfit because I, I used to dress like that. Are you talking about... Wait, which witness? The lady, the, girl... the lady witness, the girl with the big skirt, and she's got her ankle socks and her high heels and her denim jacket on. Very 80s look. Yeah, that's proper 80s, though. It's like, <laughs> oof. Um, yeah, Beck isn't happy with Gallagher's presence there and just tells him to fuck off back to Seattle. Yeah. Um, I don't know what this pissing contest is between the cops and the FBI. I guess because the FBI have more... Authority, jurisdiction. They, and they don't want this bloke coming and telling them what to do and what's what. And it's yeah. like, but he really, he talks back to him so often. I'm like, fuck off. Mm. Bellend. <laughs> Bellend. Bellend. Beck is very rude to Gallagher. He really is. Yeah, he, he, he does pop off at him a lot. Um, back at the, the cop uh, house. Uh, Beck is handed a drawing of the house. suspect at the record store, <laughs> and he realizes that it's Miller. It looks just like Miller. Gallagher explains to Beck that the guy that he's after changes his identity, takes on people's identity. DeVries, Miller, and before that, there was a guy called Lusk and someone called Butler. And they're walking outside, and this is when we see Gallagher's lovely car, um, which is a Porsche. Um, and Beck's like, you know, how much did this cost? And Gallagher says, oh, I, I stole it, like jokingly. No, he, he says, he says, would you mind asking me how much it costs? And he's like, nope. All right, how much it costs? I don't know. He's like, what, you steal it? And he's like, yeah. And they're like, ha, 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 lol, lol, lol. <laughs> he's very, yeah. He doesn't speak more than he has to, does he, Gallagher? No. Do you want to hear a good, a good joke about a Porsche? I mean, it's just given the the fucking. I'm subscribed to Porsche jokes. Um, a blonde lady wants to take up a a, a job doing handiwork, um, and she she knocks on doors and she's like, "Hi, I'm go- I can uh, I can do some some jobs around around your house if you need." And the guy's like, "Hey, would you mind painting the por the porch?" And she's like, "Yeah, no problem. Um, I'll do it for fifty bucks." And the way like, you just what? stumbled over the word porch kind of gave away the punchline, yeah. I'm not going to um, lie. And the wife's like, 50 bucks for the porch, even though it goes all the way around the house. You must be fucking joking. And he's like, well, whatever. Anyway, not long after, she comes back, she says, finished. And he's like, that didn't take you long. And she's like, yeah, well, you know, uh, it's a, it's not too, it wasn't too difficult. Anyway, also, it's not, it's not a porch. It's a, it's a Lexus. Awesome. <laughs> 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 <Blonde> jokes. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hang on. Where's the um? Where's the soundboard? Um, I I can't find the right one. I'm gonna have to. That's right, you stupid <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> Horny. Oh, I got bitch detected. I, I, so, I, I just imagine like golf clap. Topic four. Pussy. Uh, oh. What the hell was that one? That was uh, Mike Staclasa. Oh. Ooh. Oh, wait, hang on. Different brother, one. Ooh. I like that one, though. Ooh, bro. What's that? Ooh, brother. Ooh. I love that sound bite. What's that, brother? Uh? All right, I, I need <laughs> to find this other one because I've Perfect. got... 14 com. There you go. Okay, great, great. Um, Miller is in at a diner. He's at a diner. He's he's scoffing his food. He's got the music on loud on the ghetto blaster. He's having All the a other great diners. fucking day, isn't he? Diners got... hate it. They fucking yeah, he... hate it. Everyone's eyeing him. Good tunes, good food, good TV. Um, I did write down that the luxury car budget on this film is 
insane. Yeah, yeah, they got all these lovely cars. The amount of luxury cars that are in this film. I guess uh, the, Mr. Shea knows a guy that runs a car dealership. Um, but um, Miller turns down his ghetto blaster when he sees on the little tiny TV that the this future possible future president and current senator is visiting town to open a a cat sanctuary or something for sick cats. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Miller sits there and he's burping and farting away and a it's Ferrari gassy. A Ferrari stops at the traffic lights and he, he looks out the window, sees it, and he just runs after it down the street. He's, he's just fucking legging in the middle of the road after this Ferrari because he wants it. He loves Ferraris. Um but he's got this he's this old heart ridden heart attack ridden body. He's just too weak to catch up with oh, it. And he was burping and farty because he had his gastric problems in this body. He needs a triple bypass in this body. It's I a, fucking it's love it. A dog shit body. He's got to find another one. Oh, yeah, I thought that, I thought he was making those noises because of the fucking little alien thing. I didn't realize it was because he had the problems. Well, he sort of he stops once he gets out of that body, doesn't he? Yeah, no, yeah. that makes sense now in retrospect. I don't yeah. remember Brenda farting in this film. Oh, no, but that wrong. would have been very funny. Yeah. Oh, blend. Uh, blend. Gallagher explains to Beck that. If our guy sees something he wants, he steals it. If something gets in his way, he kills it. And right now he's hiding out in your city. Um, and Beck's like, what are you talking about? Are you talking about De Vries? Are you talking about Miller? You're confusing the guy. You're an idiot. You're confused. Your brain's no good. Which is a fair enough response. Because he's first he was after De Vries and now he's after Miller. Doesn't make sense. You don't know what's going on. He's been partnered with this FBI guy and nobody's telling him anything. And that is bullshit. <laughs> the, th the thing is, though, at this point, the audience know that it's an alien jumping from body to body. And it would be great if we didn't like know that right at the fucking start. So we could also be like, this guy is crazy. What's he talking about? And maybe figure it out for ourselves. Yeah. Uh, but this is not a mystery. Uh, this film. Um, no, no. No. Miller is at the Ferrari store. Um, <laughs> ye old Ferrari shop. Um, and I'm wondering at this point, did Ferrari get product placement for this film? You know, what the fuck is that? Right. I just found, I was searching for boom boxes on eBay, right? and £75,000? JVC boom box, very rare. No return, make offer, I need money is the title. Is you the, could buy is, a Ferrari for that. You could buy a Ferrari for this. Jesus. And also the fact Christ. that it is located in my hometown of Keithley. Um, oh, that's pretty good, hilarious. actually. It's very convenient. Very that convenient. That is... That's, some people are just... They live on another planet when I they when they list stuff on eBay. It's insane. I hope he sells it. Yeah. <laughs> good luck. Good luck. Uh, so there's a a car that, that drives up with the the salesman and a prospective seller. And they just park up, but Miller is like milling around. Miller and is milling. he keeps touching the car, and they're like, "Hey, buddy, stop touching the car! I'm about to buy that car." He doesn't stop um, touching the car. He doesn't. And the the muscle guy who is called Eddie, right? Yeah, mm. yeah. Is, is is forced to deal with uh, this this nuisance outside. Um, Miller is now sitting in the car, and and Eddie comes up to him and he says, "Hey, dickhead," um, which is nice. There's some <laughs> some nice language in this film. Wank, awesome. dickhead. It's quite British language in a way, isn't it? <laughs> it does feel a bit, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, our guy Eddie gets a fucking slug to his gut, um, and I don't mean a space slug. I mean an actual like bullet slug inside of the car shop. The salesman and the buyer are doing coke. Which is nice. Well, listen, you've got to sweeten the deal for a man who's about to spend hundreds of thousands of pounds. Seventy-five thousand pounds, I think. On yeah. on a on a, a Ferrari car, you've got, and he's got a little car full of cocaine for himself. It's very mm. nice. It's nice. And, it's very and classy, like, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Miller barges in with Eddie, who's who's clearly shot and bleeding out. And he asks 
for the keys to the car. They hand over the keys and then Miller just shoots them dead. And then Gallagher and Beck are not far behind investigating this crime scene. Um, and Gallagher knows that this Miller was behind it because obviously Ferrari mm. was stolen. This is a hundred percent our guy. Also, there's a lot of there's a lot of murders going down. A yeah. lot. And this this Beck's pissed off. He's like, "What is it, full moon or something?" Because <laughs> this is a lot more stiffs, as they like to call them, uh, than Ooh. than normal. Well, I, d- I don't know what the murder rate of of Los Angeles is. It's, you know, I, I would imagine it's not low. It's fairly high. Um, yeah. But even this guy was a bit taken aback by the amount of murdering. And it's all because of this guy, Miller. Um, Miller's in his Ferrari, his brand new Ferrari, and he's eyeing up the ladies and he's like, ooh. He stops a car and he, he kind of gestures at one of them and she just says, fuck off. He sees another guy drive up to a lady, point at her and say, mm. get in. Or whatever it is. Um, and it works. And he's like, I'll fucking do that. Tries it. Doesn't work. And he no. gets really mad and he pulls out his gun. And I wrote down, typical male reaction to rejection. Damn. Damn. Uh, uh, but he doesn't, he doesn't start blasting. He, no. he goes through the cards, these business cards in, in some guy's wallet. Turns out this was the guy that was uh, buying the car. It's his wallet. But we don't know that. Um, it's not spelled out for us at this point. Um, well, I think they say s- that he, that his wallet was stolen. They couldn't find his wallet, so you assume. Ah, right. That it is his wallet. Gotcha. Um, so we see there's a, a business card for a strip club, the Harem Club, and also there's um, a business called uh, Anchor Exports. And uh, oh, we have the little conversation in the car between Beck and Gallagher, where they have like a, a buddy cop bonding moment. Um, Gallagher is driving like a complete insane man, blasting through traffic lights and such. Uh, and he explains that Miller and DeVries killed his partner, which, again, that's kind of confusing that he's he's naming two different people that are responsible. Yeah, and he's not he's still not letting him in on anything. He's just no. like, yeah, they both did it. And he does explain at some point that Miller knew DeVries. They worked together at some point eons ago or something. And he's, he's vague like, what? about so it. So he was visiting him in hospital and he was like, yeah. Yeah. Not convinced by that. <laughs> Beck isn't quite buying it, but he appreciates because it sounds like, you know, Gallagher's being honest when he says that someone killed his partner. And I think he, you know, it's like, yeah, my I had a partner die once. It was pretty sad. You know, doesn't it? <laughs> Great, great bonding. <laughs> um, Miller breaks into Anchor Exports, which is filled with all these art pieces. And there's a sculpture of a lady and he starts touching the cleavage Yeah, of I it. thought that was Ugh. weird. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, when I, whenever there's a statue of a lady, I do touch it and go, oh, that's nice. You just do the honkers. Honka, honka. Um... Yeah, this he he oh he puts on some music, but con- country con- country music starts playing, <clears throat> and he's not a big fan of that. He kind of wrecks the music player. Uh, then he has a, a look at himself in the mirror, sort of touches his face, burps a bit, but he, you know he's looking at himself really weirdly. Something something's up there. Of course, we know that this isn't his body, and he's an alien inside of it. So. Again, if we didn't know that, mm. we'd be like, oh, what's going on? But that is kind of ruined, I think, by us already knowing the deal behind it. Yeah. Uh, he then s- smashes down a door and behind it is a whole bunch of fucking guns. Uh, it turns out it's not just art that this guy was exporting. Do you know, we missed, we did miss uh, something that made me laugh. Uh, I did write it down that it says, uh, when he was killing everybody in the in the Ferrari shop, and he mm. says, "Thank you, bye," and then just shoots people. <laughs> just bye. keeps saying, "Bye." When they hand him a keys, he thanks them for the keys. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Blam, blam. Bye. Well, this is polite. Uh, slug one, slug one out as well. Slug one out of body. It seems I don't know why. Yeah, I think Miller's body isn't doing good. He's dying, and. 
his neck is all fucked up and there's like gooey veins and stuff. And then we see like an, a vein in his arm just pops and the fucking spider legs try and make their way out of his body. And he like forces it back inside, gets some masking tape and wraps it up to keep like this, this you know, himself, the actual alien symbiote thing inside of this husk mm. of a body that's dying. Um, Cause he doesn't want to go <sighs> yet. Um, Cause he needs to have a body. He needs a host. So creepy. <laughs> Yeah, and this is when we discover that um, the cops um, discover this this guy that was buying the Ferrari has the company uh, Anchor Exports, and he's a fucking arms dealer, which explains everything we saw in the previous scene. Mm. <laughs> also, one of the cops has confiscated a flamethrower off of the streets. Um, but that's probably not important and won't come up at any point in the film. This flamethrower... Mm. Just bear that, that just in mind. Happened to nah. be on the streets. Chekhov's flame thrower. Um, Beck invites Gallagher for dinner at his home, and it's this tiny little bungalow in Los Angeles. So in today's market, it's probably worth about two and a half million dollars. Um, yeah. But Beck is like, "Hey, what are you expecting? A castle? Hey, get out of here!" Bet you live in a bet you live in a castle. He's like, "No, an apartment, one bed, one bath." <laughs> like, okay, sure. He's very dry. Is Gallagher? I I like it. I like it. Um, Gallagher just sort of noses around their living room a bit, and he sees a telescope and kind of smiles knowingly. Um, and then he stares really intently at a photo of Beck's daughter. And then looks at himself in the mirror and touches his face weirdly. Like the other guy did in exactly yeah. the same place. Huh. 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 <laughs> Strange. Huh. Uh, Beck's wife is reading their daughter a bedtime story um, in a really kind of like energetic way, which seems counterproductive, I would say. You know, surely you want to like bore the child a bit so that they want to go to sleep. Bore the child to sleep. Yeah. Uh, so this is coming from Simon, a childless man. It's true. It's true. As far as I know, um, <laughs> yep. who knows? Who knows? Daddy? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and then I just pull out a gun. Blam, blam. <laughs> Bye. And then I just leave. Goodbye, leave son. Bristol forever. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a great dad. Jesus. <laughs> Ryan. Ryan. Gallagher walks into the kid's bedroom and him and the daughter just stare at each other. I, I like the way he's like, he's like come on. <laughs> the wife's like, come on in for a bit if you want. And I'm like, yeah, don't invite a strange man into your daughter's room. And then they just stand there. And stare at your young daughter in her bed. It's like fucking weird. Very, very weird. Very fucking weird. We go to the strip club and... um. It's fucking Babylon 5's Claudia Christian. You've missed the dinner. Did you miss the fucking dinner? Um, no. Oh, That's does after it, Does this. it go... All right. You take it goes back and forth. more detailed notes than I did. Yeah. Um, we, we, we see that he, he drives up to the... Uh, oh, we don't actually see it's Claudia yet. He just drives up to the strip club. Then we go back to the dinner and Gallagher is struggling... We're just drinking a beer and eating his dinner. Like he's having to chew really hard to to stomach the food. Um, he's not very good at conversation either. He's like, there's really awkward small talk. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Your daughter is very special. Yeah, we like to think so. You love her, and Beck's like, yes, we love her. She's our daughter. He's like, <laughs> fuck it. He's like, what the fuck is this? Um, and I say, where are you from? What's your hometown? And he he's chewing and he's pointing up. Pointing up, oh north, to space. No north, and she's oh, like, north. Oh, up north. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's pointing up to the sky. Um, that was a good moment. And he says he's from Ras Al Haq, which is um, apparently the name of a star. Is called that. Ah, interesting. So he lives on a star. <laughs> well, I guess that system. That's that. Yeah, that solar system, and. He's because he's busy chewing. Like the wife is trying to fill in. She's like, "Raz Al Haq is that in the United States?" <laughs> it's like, American? No, it clearly isn't. It clearly isn't. Um, 
Gallagher then then tells this these these lovely parents of this young daughter that his wife is dead and so is his little girl. The man who killed his partner also killed them. And that I think probably killed the conversation for the rest of the evening. Just a little bit. It's a bit of a conversation killer. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so awkward. Oh yeah. And this is when we see that in the strip club, it's Claudia Christian from um, Babylon 5. And Quantum Leap. Oh, she was in Quantum Leap. She was. Oh, my goodness. Wait, she wasn't the baddie, was she? No, I don't no. think so. She's dancing around and the music that's playing is like, it's perfect for this scene. It's absolutely perfect. The lyrics include... Um, what is it? I want to be a bad girl, a nasty little girl. <laughs> it's so <laughs> fucking awful. It's so awful. I, I think, right, <sighs> I, I'm trying to remember what what that song is. I think it's been in another another film. Oh, God. Uh, I hate to, to find fucking it. think. I want to be a bad girl, you nasty little girl. Oh, I'm a sweet little baby girl, but I'm bad and nasty. It's awful. It's uh, so awful. There's a strippers I, parading around. <laughs> I didn't even like clock on to the lyrics. I was this, whenever there's like a strip club scene, it's very o overstimulating. You know, there's a lot of... <laughs> oh, is no, it? No, oh, yeah. G-Star Games. I mean, there's a lot going on, you know? There's titties, there's ass, there's music and lights and just people everywhere. It's You're like a, a dog looking into a butcher's. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, do, I do just immediately look for the naked, the naked women. I don't think there is a nudity in this film, right? I don't think there's uh, no nudity. You can just about see her nips through her t-shirt. Well, yeah. that doesn't count. That's not nudity. Right. Um, and, her, so. and her thong that is so good. <gasps> I oh, God. loved it. It was dollar notes, dollar bills or whatever. I was like, that's I've never seen that before. That's quite clever. We're going to have to discuss the outfit when she leaves in a bit. Mm. <laughs> Fuck me. Um, so, yeah, the... Um, the cops find the Ferrari pretty much outside of this strip club and Beck and Gallagher are on their way. Um, Gallagher is offered an Alka-Seltzer from Beck and he puts it in his mouth and Beck has to say, no, it's an Alka-Seltzer. You put it in the water. <laughs> um, Miller has found his way backstage somehow to our stripper. I'm in love uh, presumably he had to kill someone to get back there. And he just grabs her face. And we don't see what happens, but we know. We know I what know. happens. As the cops all arrive, they see the stripper walk out, and she is wearing an insane fucking outfit. I just, I cannot believe it. It's great, isn't it? It's the best, it's the best <laughs> dress I have ever seen. Yeah. Um, apparently, Claudia Christian said that um, the producers thought her breasts were too small, what? So they designed that dress to emphasize her buttocks. Chapless dress. Right. Okay. Yes. Sure. Yeah. She definitely doesn't have small tits. Uh just putting that out there. No, she doesn't. I think the I think the producers were being perverts. Just putting that also out there. What a, what a thing to say about um Hollywood. Shea, or whatever his name is. Eh, fuck him. I can't remember his name. Um, she's got honkers. Like, I'm looking at her from the side, and she's looking at the cops. They are not small. Oh, wait, no, it's her brother that's the fucking producer. Uh, Robert Shea, her brother. Stop! Stop! Sorry, it's Lynn Shea. It's, it's a different actress. We see her. She's the senator's, like, assistant PA. What? Yeah, yeah. Um... Oh, I didn't. I thought it was her husband. I didn't realize it was brother and sister. Okay. Oh well, she's in all of the fucking movies he produces. Um, right. Okay. <sighs> so uh, our stripper walks up to the Ferrari, and there's like a guy cat calling after her, and the cops are like, "Don't go near that Ferrari." Um, I think this is when we learn her name is Brenda. Yeah. 
Brenda. Which is, which is the name of one of Sophie's cats. Brenda. She's a horrible bitch. <laughs> Brenda is such a weird name for a stripper. Um, oh, you can't, you can't pick the name like strippers you're literally given. do. Pick I think they a do <laughs> to stop to stop stalkers finding out who they really are. Oh. Uh, so this this local guy that's been catcalling her walks off with her because he promises that he's got a really nice car. Um, and I trust the man in the Lamborghini jacket to have a nice car. Yeah, probably has a Lamborghini, right? Probably. You think? Sure. Um, maybe Brenda notices. So Brenda and this local guy are, are like fooling around in his car, but then he starts going, ah, ow, ow, what are you doing? Ah, ow. I found the song I was thinking of, right? It's not Prince. It's Vanity Six, Nasty Girl, and it was in Beverly Hills Cop 3. The movie we watched. And it was, oh, and it was arranged by the Star Company with Brenda Bennett. And stars and two R's like Brenda Starr. Well, this is weird. This oh is my god. Weird. Well, they were proteges of Prince, apparently. Vanity yeah, Six. Yeah, that, that's why I was. So, that's what I was confusing Prince with. Right. The, there we go. Got it. Sorry. Sorry. Continue. Excellent. Ba -ba -ba -ba. That's good. I mean, I'm sure there'll be people listening that would have been kept uh, awake tonight if they in, in suspense. Yeah. I would be um, kept awake. So I needed that. Thank you. Uh, Brenda kills this guy and throws the body out of the car. She doesn't get in that body because um, she wants to play with her tits instead. Um, she just <laughs> sat there in the car seat, just fondling her breasts. To be fair, like that's what women do. Like, why the fuck not? It's kind of fucked up when you think about it. An alien has taken over her body. Brenda herself, she's gone. She's dead. Brain gone. She no more. Instead, there's an alien possessing her body, touching up her body. And that's fucked. I mean, if I was turned into a guy, I'd whip out my cock and be like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Whoa. It's not the cock. It's the balls you'd be fucking around with. Probably. We all know. I just... We all know. I would be fascinated, and it seems like a natural instinct, really. You'd probably you know, pull it to, you know, you pull the balls too hard, and you go, ah! Yeah, yeah, I probably, I probably would. Also, yeah. what is? I mean, I'm just gonna ask the question now. What is up with the fucking aliens in this movie being obsessed with fast, expensive cars and like loud music and guns? Like they all seem to all be into the same. They're the coolest things about this planet. The music, the cars, the guns—the only good things about planet Earth to these aliens, I think. And boobs. Right. Because, yeah, they all just seem to have the same interests. <laughs> the fast, expensive car, the loud music, not all music, and guns. They love guns as well. It does make you think how many, like, worlds have they been to? Because we only know of, like, three. Their home place, Al Altair is mentioned, and Earth. But they could have visited hundreds of places, you know. Yeah. Who knows? And it turns out the good thing about Earth is the music, the cars, and the guns. Everything else lame. Fair enough. I thought it was going to be yeah. a thing, you know, but it just wasn't. Uh, but that's fine. It it doesn't. It make... feels like you know it's things that make this movie better, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. It's got nice cars. It's got loads of gunfights. And it's got music. I almost said good music. I don't. I don't know about that. So yeah, the 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 cops just you know they see that there's all these fucking dead bodies inside the strip club, and um, oh Gallagher is offered an aspirin and a glass of water, and he drops the aspirin in the water, thinking that's what you do when you're offered a pill and a glass of water. Well, sometimes, <sighs> sometimes Fuck's it's sake. not. It's not completely unusual. There's the dissolvable ones, right? Yeah, that was that was what he did previously. And now he thinks that's what you do. Because mm. he doesn't understand human things. Because he's an alien! He's an alien, alien! It's very subtle, but you may not have picked it up. Um, Miller is dead. His body is emptied of blood. Gasp. And Gallagher knows that it's Brenda that they're after now. 
the stripper that was left and was last seen with Miller. Um, Every time you say Brenda, I just keep thinking of Blen. I, I can't. <laughs> I, face. A little Blen. Almost as beautiful. Almost. We're after Brenda now. Come on. Um, the cops are in pursuit, pursuit of her already. Um, she stops the car in the middle of the street and um, the cops have got their guns out. But then she sort of like sachets out of the car and sort of touches herself a bit. And the cops briefly lower their guns and she, she pulls out a much bigger gun, opens fire, fucks their car up, gets back in her car and drives away. <laughs> Queen. I don't know why they didn't shoot her. Why? How? <sighs> sure. She had sure. her tits out. She was fondling. It's going to be one of those nights. <laughs> one of the cops <laughs> says. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not fucking wrong. Uh, Beck and Gallagher are in pursuit, though. Um, and Gallagher is not impressed with Beck's shooting. Um, he's saying, you know, try and take out the tire. Try and take out the wheel. And and Beck says, do it yourself. And so Gallagher says, hold the wheel. And he just leans out of the car and starts shooting um, as he's supposed to be driving it. Um, very dangerous. Mm. But he does manage to shoot out Brenda's tire. Well, not Brenda's tire, but Brenda's stolen car's tire. Um, the car is, is crashed and they follow on foot. And there's a, 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 a comedy moment that does not work for me. Okay. When Beck says, I'll cover you. And Gallagher's like, no, no, don't cover me. It's better if you don't. And he's like, you don't want me to cover me. And it's, no, cover me. Do you want me to cover me or not? Cover you or not? And it's, oh my God, it doesn't work. I'm having an aneurysm. <laughs> like the, uh. um, but they check out the car. Brenda is gone. Um, however, the plate glass front of this uh, dress shop has been broken mm. and they they go inside to pursue her. So fucking creepy. It's filled with mannequins. Yeah. Because of course all clothing shops are just filled with mannequins, including like baby ones for some reason. Ooh. There's some really bad there's really bad suspenseful music that plays during this. I think if you are gonna hide somewhere, you gotta blend in, right? Hide with the mannequins. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't even try to blend in though. <laughs> no. She didn't try to blend blend in. I well so you said blend and I was like, well oh, blend in. <laughs> blend. <laughs> oh blend. Their music that plays as they're like guns out going around this dark clothing store with all these mannequins, it's like ding 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 It's just constantly making that noise to try try and make you on the edge of your seat. And it's Awful. I hate it. I feel manipulated by the film for doing mm -hmm. that. That's what films do. They manipulate your feelings and your emotions. So That's true. That's what music does. Mm. Yeah. Uh Brenda appears on some sort of like catwalk gangway at the top of a flight of stairs or something. And she's got a big gun and just shoots away. And they shoot she's back. She's got a big gun. Yes, she has. Brenda is shot plenty of times. Um Maybe like the the side of her head got shot. It's not entirely clear, but her arm got shot a bunch. Her shoulder, um, but she yeah. does not react at all. She walks it hit. off, and the cop yeah. is like, "Huh? What? What's what? going on? What? What's going on?" She wanders upstairs to the roof, and Gallagher says to Beck, "It's very important they reach her before she dies." And now they're up on the rooftop hunting for her. Um, it's. I'll, I'll, I'll briefly summarize this. Beck gets shot, falls off the building, but he's hanging on, mm. um, just about. Gallagher manages to save him. He he shoots at Brenda, who walks away very slowly, like backing, backing away. Gallagher pulls out some weird fucking alien space gun. His doodad. I wrote yeah, down it's his doodad. doodad. The doodad. Brenda says to him, I'm not coming out yet. I'll kill you first. And then she jumps off the roof through yeah. this, um, I guess, the sign of the, the, the shop. The neon signage, yeah. Mm. Just smashes through that, lands on the floor in a dead body of heap. Um, Beck um, is saved. Lloyd saves him first, though. Like, he doesn't want Lloyd to die. Mm. He Lloyd makes sure Gallagher. that Lloyd is... He make, Lloyd makes sure that... That Beck is on is is back in safety. 
like before yeah. anything else. So that's that's nice of him. That is really nice. That know? was a yeah. Bros before hoes. Some guy pulls over just dressed casually, and it turns out that this was an off-duty cop responding to the scene. Lieutenant. Yeah. And he has a lovely doggy. Called um, Roy. Roy, which is the name of Ozzy's cat. Yes. Roy has a what? mustache. What the fuck? Um, Masterson is is this gentleman, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I didn't realise he was a cop. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Who's this I dog? I just thought it was a, 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 dog, a dog walker that just happened to be walking past. Yeah. But the dog runs off. Uh, sees Brenda and just sniffs his around, sniffs around her. Brenda opens her eyes, grabs hold of the dog. Cuddle time, bitch. Gallagher arrives on the scene of the body and demands to know if anyone's touched the body. And unbeknownst to him, the dog just stops, turns around and snarls. <laughs> mm. Great, great acting from that dog. Roy, I love it. I love you. Big hand for Roy. What do you think they did to Roy to make him snarl? Um, I think that they, they've trained him mm. to do that because that's what they do. I thought they just showed him like a picture of a cat. And he went, <laughs> <laughs> they showed him a picture of a, a dog that had been neutered. Like, fuck. <laughs> this could be you, son, if you oh, don't no. behave. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good dog growl. Yeah. <laughs> Beck <laughs> is... Well, uh, this is going to be great when I come out as a furry. We'll look back on um, on this recording. When you come out, are you not out? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. I know. I'm... Relax. Calm down, everyone. Calm down. Oh, I think um, you were talking to me. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. What if we're all secretly furries? I'm all right, really. I'm, I'm okay. She's um, a feet girl. <sighs> yeah, she's a feet girl. We know sure, that. yeah. Winky face. Hmm. Winky uh, face. Beck, <laughs> Beck wants answers, but Gallagher is refusing to give him like anything, and he says, "No, I know, I know, she's dead. But what we're after, what I'm after, it's still out there." Uh, Beck just has his colleague arrest Gallagher for not cooperating. Bold move to arrest an FBI agent. Yep. But and he's just about like, fucking had enough. I like, I like, explanation won't help you. This is like, like, it's just it's like well, it kind of might help, you know. I don't explanation know. won't help you. And then he explains later and he's like, oh. Oh, okay. Thank you for explaining. <laughs> Back at the, the cop house, um, Beck's colleagues bring him a bunch of info and stuff. One brings an evidence bag with a weird magic alien gun inside. And the lab, we're going to take a look at it later. Another colleague says, Lloyd Gallagher died six months ago with his partner Robert Stone when they were in a forest fire. You remember that big forest fire that happened? And he shows him a photo of Robert Stone, and it's our guy. It's Kyle McLaughlin. Our guy. Mm. He's been lying about being a dead FBI agent. Oh no! The weird FBI agent is act is is actually weird. No way! I don't believe it. Also, in my notes, when the dog took over, or when the host took over the dog, sorry, I put no. Well, actually, no. I put well, sex worker has officially died. And then I put, yep. no, she's a dog now. Oh my God, is the dog going to steal an expensive car? Listen to cool music? Pack some heat? <laughs> Just like all the other <laughs> fucking, <laughs> all the other fucking hosts. Oh, oh, I was disappointed when it didn't, but, you know. Candace loved, Candace loved it. So I was sitting with Candace on the bed watching this. And as soon as the dog was on screen, she... She just she zoned in, and oh my God. like you know when you can tell a cat's watching something. A little head moved, her ears were, were forwards. She was watching it. The when basically the dog starts looking in the mirror, and then the dog. That shit was so funny, by the way. I love that so much. The dog goes after the the man. It jumps through a door or window or something, smashes through it, and Candice was like, "Whoa!" 
It's like the interior door leading to the kitchen. It's got like a glass window in it, the frosted window, and the dog just fucking yeets itself through it, yeah. attacks its owner. His owner bangs his head against the fridge and uh, falls down. Spills his strawberries all over himself or whatever he has. <laughs> and Candace was like, wow, this is fucking great. Such a, it's such a good scene. I love it. The fucking, the dog not being a good boy. The fucking um, destroyed. Not, not being a very good boy. Um, it was super cute though. Candace, Candace absolutely fucking loved it. She was bless her. Bless she was her in heart. tune. She was like ten out of ten fuck. from Candice Marie. Yeah, she loved it. Uh, Beck wants answers, and he wants them now. Uh, Gallagher explains that Devries, Miller, and Brenda are all the same, and they're not human. Gallagher's been after it for some time. Nine of your Earth years. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now this thing is on Earth. It gets inside a body, and when it's too damaged, it comes out and it gets inside of another body. And it's that moment when it's going between bodies. It's the only time Gallagher can kill it, and he needs his magic gun to do it. Especially right now, as this spider slug from space knows that Gallagher is here, and it's going to come after him now. He says, we don't need to find it. It's going to come after me. And like the next scene is the uh, the cell door closing on Gallagher. <laughs> Beck has not bought a single fucking word that he said to him. That uh, thinks explanation, he's full of shit. explanation didn't help him. He was just like, you know what? You are such a turd. Get yeah. in that cell. Fuck off. Fuck off. So yeah, Beck goes home to his wife and kid. Um, he's injured and his wife is all upset. Uh uh, back at the police station, um, our, our dude that was in the plain clothes, um, the guy that got yeeted against his fridge by the dog, walks in looking sus as fuck. Um, <laughs> he looks weird. He wasn't supposed to be in today. Why is he in? Um, He's got work to do. Hey. Wait, so... So... How fucking, like... Wait, so the do The dog... <laughs> That was on the scene. Just so yeah, happened. Brenda got inside the dog. Yeah. And then the dog entered Masterson. It, it, it just so happened that it was an off-duty policeman that had the dog that was walking past the scene. Yeah. Right. Which okay. was very lucky. Yeah, I, that's what I was trying to get to, because I'm like, wow, that's pretty fucking like, lucky there. I guess, I guess the, 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 the alien dude... That's now in Masterson was like, okay, I'm gonna have to put some clothes on and and go about my my quest um, to be yeah. president of the United States. And he looks in the wardrobe and he sees a police uniform and he's like, ah, <laughs> very lucky. And so he arrives at the police station in his uniform and he's like, oh yeah, I decided to come in today on my day off. Uh, where's the senator going to be here for his speech? <laughs> and they tell him and. Um, yeah. Well, what did he say? They introduced him. The lady introduced him, and he was like, "You're the one that they're always going on about, or something." What did he say? I can't fucking remember. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, meanwhile, in the evidence room, uh, the cop there is fucking around with the alien gun and accidentally fires it. A a golden beam comes out of it and blows a fucking hole in the wall. Um, yeah. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. Uh, just... The alien in Masterson recognizes the noise of the beep, presumably. You know what noise it is? It's the mm. phaser noise from fucking Star Trek. Oh, I'm are you sure. kidding me? He I'm recognizes sure. it because he's like, that's from Star Trek. I love Star Trek. <laughs> that's oh, a space that's gun. <laughs> great. That's a space gun. <laughs> that's a phaser. Phaser. Um, Masterson demands to be taken to Gallagher because um, he knows that he's in the jail here. And he grabs a hold of Beck, pointing a gun at him, and says, take me to Masterson. Uh, a cop right behind them sees this, and he's like, hey, what's, what's going on? And then Masterson just blows him away. <laughs> um, and then a bunch of cops are now following them quite carefully, guns drawn. Um, and Masterson ends up being gunned horribly. He's shot many times. Um, but he gets away... Um, and now, Be at this point, Beck now believes Gallagher, and um, 
He rushes to the jail. Uh, well, we're, we're about fucking time. Uh, what did it take? Yeah. Whoa, a lot of explosions and big bloody alien. Beck runs to the jail and he's like, open the door, give me the keys, buzz me open. And he like pulls a gun on the jailer, um, manages to get to Gallagher's cell. And Gallagher says that the real Masterson is is dead. Sorry, your friend, he's gone now. The alien's taken over. Um, and he gets the gun back. So Gallagher now has his magic gun. It's all good. Um, apart from the fact Madison, uh, sorry, Masterson has now showed up at the jail and they have to shoot each other with guns for a bit. Um, Masterson is yelling out to uh, Gallagher. He calls him al Hak, which I like, is that a nickname because he's from that star? Is that his real name? I think that's his real name because I think, I think he he knows him because obviously he killed his partner, his wife, his child. Mm. Like I think he knows who he is. I think he's just a a right bastard. Oh yeah, he's a hundred percent bastard. <laughs> uh, he asks him, "How do you like being human?" Um, what does what does Gallagher say? Something like, "It's all right. Yeah, it's, it's fine. All right. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah." And Beck Be- Beck's just like looking at him like, "What the fuck? What? You're an alien." Like, this- he hasn't actually <laughs> picked up on that yet. <laughs> Have we gone past the scene where fucking Danny Trejo gets blasted? No, that's that's in a... Oh, maybe it is, yeah. Because he's is walking... He he, in the he jail gets cell. escorted out of j- the jail, and then Danny Trejo gets... Hey, dude, away. what kind of hippie are you? And then he just gets fucking blasted. I'm like, what, Danny Trejo? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Hello? I, didn't even, I didn't even clock it was Danny Trejo. I'm sorry. I don't know how I missed that. He always has these very random throwaway uh, roles. roles. Like yeah. cam- cameo roles. Uh, they're really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I just, I just looked up the trivia. Apparently, Danny Trejo wasn't cast for this role. He was just in the jail because he was arrested. Stop. Um, <laughs> you motherfucker! I fucking believed you. Stop it! <laughs> oh my god. Um, so yeah, Masterson says this this weird line: "Better than Altarians. Altarians are filthy people," which seems racist against Altarians. But it's nice because it implies you know they've been you know this chase may, might have been going on from planet to planet year after year. Uh, then Masterson pulls out a fucking rocket launcher. <laughs> Um, and it, I don't even know what happens here. He shoots it and things explode, but like no one seems to be really hurt by it. And he disappears. I think it was more distraction than anything else. Um, so Gallagher and Beck follow this trail of blood that he's helpfully left behind. Because Masterson is like, he's been shot so many times, he's dying. He needs oh, yeah. to find another body. Um Beck is very angry with Gallagher about him not using the special magic alien gun that he handed back to him. Mm. And Gallagher responds by shooting at Beck and nothing happens. Um, He says, you know, you're the wrong composition. It doesn't affect human flesh. To be fair, to be fair, right? Explaining things to Beck has not worked historically. So showing him is the only way to get this point across. That's true. And it's good for us, the audience, to know why he he's not just using the magic gun. He has mm. to use it when the symbiote thing is going from body to body. Mm. It has to be on the slug itself. We see Masterson's dead body. The aliens moved on, and we learn that it was Willis who's recently just left. That's Beck's partner, Willis. Oh, no. And Beck looks a bit sad because he realises this means Willis is now dead and the alien's in him. There's no way of getting Willis back. He's gone now. He's gone. When the, when the alien leaves a body, it kills? I think when it enters a body, that person is now gone. Mm-hmm. So the dog is dead. The dog, I'm afraid, is dead. No. No, actually, die. actually. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't work in the same way for dogs. It left yeah. the dogs. It left the dog. The dog woke up. Went. Oh, where's that was Daddy? Weird. No, that was weird. And then he goes and he eats because that is what dog do. Dog. I think. He- I think. I think what happens is because Masterson is gone. 
The dog ended up getting adopted by a nice family that live on a farm upstate. And now it's just running around chasing rabbits in the fields. It's really it's nice. Definitely not dead. Mm. No. Gee. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys, for explaining okay. all that. Like I'm a six year old. <laughs> The senator arrives in town to open the Derek Zoolander Centre for Kids Who Can't Read Good. Um, Amazing. And give a speech. Read this is good for AIDS. <laughs> and in this speech, he's probably going to announce his run for president. So this is a big deal. And there's a lot of press around. And there's a lot of security. Mm. Willis shows up. With the alien inside of him now, just remember, he's an alien in him. He shows his ID, he gains entry to the building. Beck and Gallagher show up and they they try and rush in as Willis goes up a set of stairs and smiles at them being stopped. And they're like, There's an assassin's gonna kill the senator! The senator's security team are on high alert, it's a code red, and they're gonna rush him out through the back exit. Willis is confronted by a cop. Now they've been warned to be on the lookout for Willis. And he's like, I have to take your your gun and your badge off of you, sir. I'm sorry. And he just gets a bullet to his fucking like neck. Um, it's kind of Adam's apple kind of area. Just gets blown away by Willis. Um, Willis just goes to town. He's, he's, he's killing security guys left and right. He's been shot dozens of times. Um, by um, Gallagher and co who have managed to catch up with him but he's not stopping there's a little gunfight in a kitchen which is nice I always like that when there's like a, a fight in a scenery, kitchen you know yeah it's interesting um, uh, Beck Beck's gun runs out of ammo though and he oh, gets oh. shot a couple of times by Willis and collapses gets shot in the in the tummy which is not a good place yeah, to be shot it's not a good place um Willis is looking quite pasty looking as he's blowing cops away. Um, and he manages to corner the senator who just like pushes Lin Shay into a cupboard. All of his security is killed by Willis. And he's like, who are you? Why are you here? What's what's happening? Who am I? <laughs> Where, what am I? What's, <laughs> what's going on? Um, and there's some... At this point, because I've got subtitles on, at this point... There's some extras that have lines, and the subtitles call them male number 25, male number 26, and it continues like that for a couple more scenes. So it's like a cop that says, hey, we got to get this guy out of here. And it, it says his name's male 25. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. Why is the subtitle saying that? Why? <laughs> Just keeping track of the males in the film. <laughs> so, a lot of men in this film. So um, many, so and course, many men. men. And of course, men, the women men. in this film, Lin Shay and a stripper. Oh, and a wife of a cop and his daughter. Uh, what I'm saying is not it's not passing the Bechtel test anytime soon. Um, the hidden. So, yeah, the, the senator and our guy are in this room together alone. So guess what happens? Um, the senator leaves. Uh, security that's alive have caught up with him and are escorting him to a press conference and Gallagher and the senator lock eyes and it's it's obvious that the alien is in the senator now um, mm -hmm. and we have this press conference and someone asks hey senator are you, do you are you going to announce you're running for president and he like kind of says to himself I want to be president now I want and, to then be he, president. and then he goes up to the mic and he says, I want to be president. <laughs> <laughs> and then he smiles. And, you know, all these people are taking pictures and they're loving it. This is it. The official announcement. Everyone's clapping. He's finally managed to say something that relate that everyone can relate to. Me be president. Yeah, Gallagher has got this big red bag and he, he manages to push his way past security Gets shot a couple of times, and he's running in slow motion towards the senator. The senator manages to grab a gun off of someone and shoots at him too. And our dude pulls out the fucking flamethrower from the bag. 
<laughs> Gallagher has the flamethrower. Do you remember the flamethrower from earlier? Yeah, I remember the flamethrower. Mm. Yeah. Mm. He pulls it out and just blasts Senator with it, burning him to a blackened crisp. It's that amazing. Is a scary puppet as well. It's because... so fucking good. Um, there's a journalist in the audience that says, "Look." And there's crisp body, its eyes open, and then the slug crawls out of its mouth. And this is when Gallagher pulls out his alien magic gun and shoots the slug. Hooray! And then collapses. Yay! Yay! Happy ending! Well, not quite yet. Uh, Beck is in hospital. His wife is very upset. It doesn't sound like it's a good um, prognosis. Is that the word? Prognosis, yeah. He doesn't. Um, he doesn't look like he's going to make it out. Yeah. Um, although they're not <sighs> right. He's there's just a lot on of like machines an, and beeping. No, but there's not enough machines to keep that man alive. Like apparently up. he's breathing fine because he's not intubated. There's not a lot of stuff on on him in him. He's not in intensive care again. There's there's a beeping though going beep beep. So something must be wrong. Um, also, daughter is in the corridor outside. Mummy, is daddy going to be all right? Oh, no. He's not, he's not going to be all right. Gallagher is just watching creepily. Um, Gallagher is in the next room because yeah. obviously Gallagher got shot quite a bit. Uh, bear in mind, this man just assassinated a senator by burning him to death. Um. <laughs> yeah, 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 but... As that was happening, someone was like, wait, look. And then, you know, they noticed that it was like the slug or something. Everyone so. saw the alien spider leg slug. Yeah, come so out. it's okay. He's, he's, he's yeah. cool. Oh, apparently, that's fine. Yeah, it's okay. So, yeah, um, Gallagher then walks into Beck's room and Beck just dies. As soon as he walks in, the machines are going, beep, beep, beep. He just fucking dies. Yeah, and I thought that was fucking bizarre. <laughs> And this is when Gallagher or Al Hag um, leans in and he throws up this disgusting spider slug. Oh, no, he doesn't. A he golden doesn't. light, a pure golden light comes out of his mouth and into Beck. I was so fucking happy when <laughs> it was a, when it was a golden, shimmering, ethereal light. I was so happy. I can't even... But it was not a slug. Yeah. Honestly. I thought I felt ripped off. Like at least it could have been a nice looking slug. Well, it was like a pink one with eyelashes. Yeah, a pink one with a eyelashes. Cat one. A, a cat bow. one coming out. Wow. Wow. Um so yeah, this golden light is poured into Beck. A doctor runs in and sees the dead body of Gallagher on the floor. And then Beck wakes up. He's fine. It's as though nothing had happened to him. Um, Beck's wife is very happy and hugging him, but then the daughter looks at him and he looks at the daughter and she kind of hesitates before she holds on to two of his fingers on his mm. hand. Hmm. Do you think she knows? Roll creds. Roll creds. Do you think she knows? Did it, right. Did he give his life force to Beck or is, did he climb into Beck? Is he? Is he now Beck? Or he is he... Beck. He is I'm Beck. pretty sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he's going to have to pretend, pretend to have all the memories and all the same. He's going to have to pretend to be the same person that Beck was, despite knowing him for like two days. He's been through a lot of trauma. Maybe his head got banged horribly. He was on the verge of death. You know, a lot of people they they're different afterwards. So maybe, you know. As he's making love to his wife. <laughs> you know the woman that we got my mom's cat Chonky from? She you think had, she was an alien? Well, she had a brain aneurysm. Oh my and God. Okay. <laughs> she, got, she got fired. Sophie. She got fired <laughs> from her job at the school because she got, kept hitting on boys. Ah! She thought she was 23, ah! and she, but she was still hitting on 16-year-old lads. So she got fired. Ah! And so, yes, you can be very different. <laughs> 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 Oh, fucking hell. And she gave me her cat. She also shoved me her piss in a jug. What the Sophie, fuck? Sophie, this was your movie. What are your final thoughts? <laughs> and your rating. 
I thought this film was fabulous. I thought it was a bit Fuck cheesy sometimes, me. a bit stupid, but it was very easygoing and it had a great pace to it. You know, there wasn't um, as much mystery as I would have liked, but it was very X Files. It was like watching a really mm. long episode of X Files. There's been a yeah. few that are similar to that, um, but it had a, a more light-hearted feel than X Files, even. But I, I'm a big fan of X Files, so that's why I picked it as well. And uh, um, I thought it'd be fun, and I gave it nine out of ten. Bloody hell, spells. Yeah. Just remember, um, you gave Raiders of the Lost Ark 4 out of 10, and you've given The Hidden 9 out of 10. Yes. Yep. Yep. Do you think this is more than twice as good as oh, Raiders? Oh, 100%. Like, okay. it's, 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 it's up there in like some of my favourite films. Like It's got a heart next right. to it on Letterboxd, because it's that fucking good. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I, I just think it's, it's so... It's underrated. It's funny, right? It's got bits of humour in it. It's easy. It's laid back. It's easy going. It's got Kyle McLaughlin in it. It's got a very yeah. cool cast. You know, it's it's an easy story. You know, you're not gonna be you're not gonna be fucking trying to figure things out on a whiteboard like that meme of that man that I don't know what it's from. Charlie Day. Is that what that? Always is? sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's what that's from. Uh. I just I, and I like it. I like X Files. I like that sort of daft, stupid, cheeseoid, uh, cheeseoid, cheeseoid <laughs> film. There wasn't a lot of petrol. Uh, petrol. <laughs> and it's got that lady in it, Christina. Who's a what's her? Claudia Christian from Babylon Five. Yeah, yeah, she's great. Susan Ivanova, right? Um, yeah. Nine out of ten. Pff, fucking cool. Cool as shit. Fucking cool. Okay. Uh, G, you can go last because I I think you might might be giving it a low score. Okay. <laughs> uh, I I <laughs> I I did enjoy this this film. I did describe it as a romp earlier, and I I stand by that hundred percent. I really do think. It would have been a better film if there was more of a mystery element. If we didn't know right fucking near the start of the film that it was an alien. Aliens are what it's all about. Karl McLaughlin clearly not acting like a normal human being. He's an alien too, chasing an alien. You know that very early on. Um, yeah. But I mean, that said, um, it was it was really fun. It was really fun. There, there wasn't a boring moment in it, really. It flowed well, and that's very important, um, especially uh, when it comes to your bowels as well. Uh, you don't want to force anything. Um, I, I, th <laughs> I, I don't know if Karl McLaughlin was the best in this, but he was no. he was good enough. It's just that his character was very staid, stoic, very calm, you know, a boring alien man. Um, he played it well when he started getting really stupid, awkward. Yeah, you know, that, that was pretty good. <sighs> I just found it painful. The cringe, yeah, was was a bit much. Um, but it was action packed. Lots of explosions and guns and and a few boobs. Sure, you know it's a, it's a solid action eighties action movie with a sci fi twist. I gave it seven out of ten. Not the best film ever made. No, um, that's Shrek, obviously. <laughs> but but yeah, it's a solid seven for me. Simon, the Honeydew Man, Diggy Hole Lane, G Star Games. Hello. What did you think? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, mysterious in some aspects. I would have, like you said, would have preferred if it was more mystery. The only mystery really was the question of um, Lloyd Gallagher. Um, but even then, it wasn't really like that sort of hidden. Hidden, get it? Um, uh, I liked it. I really did. It's, you know, I, I sort of compared it in my mind to Extro in some aspects because of the mm. sort of little alien host. But... Um, yeah, just like the sort of sinister 
aspect of how it's just, yeah just in- intrudes in people's lives and kills and takes over and and all that kind of stuff um I, I think it was good. Like you said, uh, I don't think Kyle McLaughlin was utilized all that much in the in the role. I did like the, the cop, though. I liked Beck. I thought the dynamic was funny in some aspects. Um, I'm bordering between a five and a six. Oh. But I think I want to give it a six. A six? That's yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Jesus Christ, I, that's I, high. Yeah, for you. I, 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 I liked for like it a, for like trash like this. It's, <laughs> it's. I thought it was like pretty well done. You know, there's a lot of sets and a lot of places they go to, and yeah, like the prosthetics are really cool. The stories, you know, are not groundbreaking, but it's thought so they did it well enough. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was decent, honestly. Well, six. Oh, that's good. You had fun watching it. Yeah, I, I was pretty engaged. I didn't find myself disengaging, and I do prefer it to extra. Sorry, but um, that's okay. Your opinions are like assholes. Yeah. Everyone's got one. Um, but yeah, full I, of shit. <laughs> full of shit. <laughs> Unless you get your uh, uh, what do they call those things where they clean your 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 asshole? Colonic irrigation enemas. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a six from me. Fantastic. Bloody hell. Fantastic. Well, I mean, I think that's, a, a, you know, some nice scores for it, honestly. Yeah. You know? I'm really happy. Because I really do think, I really do think this movie is kind of pretty trash. Wow. Even though I enjoyed it. You know? Why do you think it's trash? It's not winning any Oscars. Um... I think it's like a, a a decent. It's silly. It's a very silly film. I don't. Why? Why you know? is it silly? It's it fits in a genre. It certainly does. Yeah. Um, you like your eighties action movies, then, G? Yeah, I would say so. I I love I love the vibe around it. I think it really. It just did. It it did a good job of like feeling real and present. And authentic. There was something about the sets and the filming and the, the people acting in it. And a lot of the sets felt very real, very nice, very believable. Like the house, the dealership, the the shop, the the vinyl, the, the music store. This is this might sound crazy, but it kind of almost feels like lethal, like a lethal weapon kind of movie, but with like an alien slug. I'm pretty sure I saw something. <laughs> That's funny. In the trivia, Michael Nuri turned down the role of Martin Riggs in Lethal Weapon, which oh, was shit. which was made okay. the same year as this film set in Los Angeles, and also a buddy cop yeah. film like this. And then the role right. went to Mel Gibson, as we all know. Perfect segue into the trivia section. I I only briefly looked at it. Yeah, um, I just I remember seeing Lethal Weapon in the trivia, and I was like, wait, that that reminds me. But yeah, excellent. Um. The one of the pieces of trivia I have is uh, it mentions the fact that Claudia Christ- Claudia Christensen's sorry Claudia Christensen's breasts were too small, so they emphasized her her buttocks in the Botox. costumes. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is that she <laughs> suffered from an eye injury. Um, a prop gun made something like there was a, a squib on set to make something explode. And a little bit of shrapnel went into her fucking eye and scratched her cornea. An eye injury. Um, Wink. So from that moment onwards, whenever she fired a prop gun, which she had to do on Babylon 5 a few times, she would always turn away from it. Fair, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, once bitten, twice shy. Yeah. Um, Don't even mess though, with guns on set. Yeah, even though the Babylon 5 guns were all like laser guns... So they nothing came out of it. She nothing was, even you know, fired. she was just holding it up. She still instinctively looked away. It's just that reflex, um, I guess. Yeah. Um, also, uh, De Vries, the guy at the start of the film who has his rampage, De Vries is also the name of a character in Dune, <gasps> um, which stars Kyle McLaughlin. Whoa. Um, I'm talking about the David Lynch one, not the not the new ones. We um, gathered, but yes, 
Oh, there was some sound effects from The Thing used in this. Uh, there, apparently there was also a phaser sound effect from Star Trek. Um, <laughs> but when the spider legs are coming out of the guy's arm, apparently that sound effect was in The Thing. Mm. Um, that kind of sound, I guess. Um, so when it was released on DVD in Australia, it was given the M rating. But when it was released on VHS in Australia in the 1980s on CBS slash Fox, it was given the R18 oh. rating. But Australia is right. weird. They they uh, there's something about like th- like the censorship and like how they rate things. They things are very like more intense than they actually are for some reason. I don't know why. They they're like really strict with ratings with games and movies. I was checking to see when that mass shooting happened, but that was 96 in Australia. Oh. Port Arthur. Oh, they, I mean, like, guns aren't really a thing. Um, Not after that. Not after that, no. Uh, Like, I don't know if they've changed it, and I think I've mentioned this before, but they're a lot stricter if you're going to have any sort of gun in Australia. Yeah. It can only be a certain model. It can only be for a certain type of thing, which is, like, hunting, I guess. You need to have a locker for it. They do mental health checks, background checks, you know, what they should be doing uh, mm. if you're going to own a gun. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. yeah, very strict. Oh, the uh, the Italian title of this film is Le Eliano, the Alien. The um, Alien. Le Eliano. Which apparently that spoils half the plot, which um, I mean, IMDb it, says. It but no. Of- <laughs> Well, I mean, the hidden... It spoils the first seven minutes, maybe. Ruined. Can't watch it now. The hidden gives a very different impression to me. Mm. Like, I didn't yeah. read synopsis. I didn't read... I just wanted to go in without knowing um, little to... Uh, sort of very little about it, because I want to be surprised. And yeah. yeah, I just was didn't know what to expect. But when you're calling it the alien, or whatever the hell... You're kind of giving it away a little bit, so... Yeah. Um, we got any more interesting triv? Well, the original uh, ending had the alien disguised as the senator guessing away. Oh. Oh, and then becoming president and mm. then taking over the world. I'm president now! I want to be president <laughs> and I am president. Um... Although both Gallagher and his quarry inhabit human bodies, they do seem to have different abilities and limitations. Gallagher is able to spot the other in any body by sight, while his enemy cannot. Also, Gallagher seems to be able to repair damage to his host body, while his enemy's presence uses up his host in a matter of days. I think yeah. that's bullshit. I don't know. Well, I, don't I mean, know. Beck was on the verge of death, and now he's he fine. Just, he just keeps... Yeah, no, but he just keeps fucking... I don't know. I, I think don't it's because he's a goodie. The goody alien has good powers of healing, and the bad alien is nasty and naughty. Naughty. He's a naughty little girl. (laughs) 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 Those lyrics. Uh, What was the... Well, the the budget is estimated at five million, just in case G didn't look that up. Oh, no, I haven't. Um, Okay. Yeah, five million, and then I think worldwide was just under ten million. So nine... Seven, four, eight. So it did fine. It did fine. Pretty good, right. honestly. Yeah. Three or four million was spent on uh, luxury cars. <laughs> so. <laughs> true. Hmm. True, true, true. Uh, video game? Question mark? Oh, I would fucking love this as a game. How would like, it you've work? Got to, you've got to hunt down the 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 guy, the alien guy. Hmm. In but you don't know bodies. who it is. But you don't know who it is. You've just got to pick up clues. So it's like Among Us. Not really, because, like, that's boring. <laughs> it's like Trouble in Terrorist Town. No, because that's boring. <gasps> Sophie. Sophie, you can't tell the truth like that. Stop it. No, sorry. They <laughs> hated me because I tell the truth. <laughs> the, the, like, you've got to pick up clues around, like, LA of... And you're you're an FBI man, and you've got to figure it out, and you've got a, a thing, and you've also got to not be outed as an alien yourself. Oh, that's an interesting thing, yeah. So now and again, you have to go into a diner and awkwardly eat some pancakes, and and take a boombox in and blast some 
music. No, no, you're the goody in this. You're oh, Karma Glocken. Oh, okay. There's a, a magpie making a nest outside and he's taking really big twigs around. Son- One for sorrow. What hmm. are you doing? You're never going to manage to build a nest with that stick, you fucking idiot. You tell him. Hey, go fuck yourself, lady. I'm working here. The magpies around here are mega pissy. They don't because they build their nest around here and then they just yell at the cats and me if I go anywhere the, near the tree. The sheer audacity of an English woman talking to an Australian woman and saying, "Yeah, ma- our magpies are mean." No, but the one fell down the chimney. What? Right. One came down the chimney. <laughs> And uh, flew around getting soot everywhere. I had to catch it in like a in a towel. The hidden. <laughs> 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 oh. Okay. I um, disassociated for a second. I just heard magpie and then Australian magpie. really loudly, and then I I I don't know what happened after that. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, Sophie, have you mm. replaced this film on your list of films? Right, I have. I have, but I, I'm I'm struggling between three, so I want to roll a dice for myself. Oh! I want to roll a six-sided dice for myself. Um, Why don't you roll a three-sided dice? A little joke there, a little joke. Ha 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 ha. But there is three-sided dice. Yeah, they don't actually, they've got curved surfaces and they're weird. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, uh, I can roll a d6. Um... One or two will be the first film, a, th- a three or a four will be set. You know, you know it. Okay. It's a two, so it's the first film. Oh, uh, it's uh, the first film. All right, it's the uninvited then. Are you fucking kidding me? After no. this, <laughs> what a double bill that would be. I know, it would be great, one. The it? uninvited. Um, that's the cat one. Yeah. Now, it's similar, it's similar and that's what, what I made, made me think of it. Okay. Right. Um, 1987 one. Yeah. Quite a few films called The Uninvited. Well, it's just uninvited, I think. It doesn't have a the... It's also called, like, Death Ship or something in some other countries. The Death Ship. These people are stuck on a boat and there's an angry cat. Really good. She's going to love it. <laughs> She's going to hate it. Um, it's worse than Extra. There's a cat um, in it. Okay, I will do our roll to dis- determine what we will watch. Uh, well, it's two rolls. First of all, we're going to narrow it down to one film each. Um, I'll remind people what our lists are. I have The Guest, Action Jackson, Horror Express, Murder Ahoy, Krull, and Elvira's Haunted Hills. G has Perfect Blue, Crocodile and I, Sea of Love, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Shutter Island, and... Princess Diaries. You did it to yourself. <gasps> you did it to yourself. You did it to yourself. Sophie has Labyrinth, Uninvited, Ruffars, Wild at Heart, Total Recall, and Cemetery Man. We got a one. So it'll either be The Guest, Perfect Blue, or Labyrinth. Those are three good films. Okay, so... Let's determine which of those three we'll be watching. Come on, let's go. One or two will be the guest. Three or a four will be Perfect Blue. A five or six will be Labyrinth. We are watching G-Star Games, Perfect Blue. Um, You might have trouble finding this on streaming. Um, We all have a physical copy of it. Of course we do. But I'm sure... Yo ho ho ho! <laughs> there are ways of, of, Yo, of finding. Yo ho! Fiddle me bum. Fiddle me bum. Perfect blue is the film we will be watching and discussing next week. It is an anime. Oh my god! This is our first one. Yes, our first anime. Um, my god. It's okay though because it's like a Jalo film, so it's actually good. Um. Exciting. Exciting. God, I love I'm reading the trivia for Uninvited um uh, just, you know, ahead of time. And Clue Gulager's false teeth were made by his son, Tom Gulager. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, Unsubscribe from Uninvited great. Facts. Unsubscribe. Uh. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having me on your podcast, Lades. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us, Simon. Um we hope to see you again. Who's the guest next week? 
Uh, it's actually Clue Gulaga's false teeth. Oh my god! I uh, love so, them! Yeah, but you know, it's a good job that you you were before them because it's going to be a hard act to follow. Oh, tough act to follow. Yeah. Hit the music. No, don't play that. It's an awful song. Um, thank you very much for listening to this podcast. Um, goodbye. Adieu. Goodbye. So much energy there at the end. Yeah. Can we can we do a holler? Can we go? Woo! Okay, let's do it again. Thank you wait, for what? watching. Wait, wait. What are we doing? Thank. thank- right. <laughs> Stand in there, just use that. No, use that. This is gold. Just use that as the outro. Hello, everyone. It's G here to say thank you to our wonderful supporters over on the Patreon. You guys are freaking MVPs, man. Thank you so much. To those of you who don't know this, we have a letterbox accounts as well. Um, uh, myself and Simon have recently made one. Booth already had one but i think it should be g star games simon honeydew and booth over on the uh on letterbox but there's posts on the patreon to let you guys know that of those accounts and links to them um but i am also here to say thank you to our amazing patreon supporters our giga yompers thank you so much to bottle gnomes enki 13 Lawrence thibodeau sleepy dij luck 33 i'm a robot and scott 5877 You guys are absolute MVPs. We hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, we will catch you guys in the next one. Uh, Take care. Toodaloo. Goodbye.